this 800 million power player literally cannot be zeroed it is actually impossible to zero his city because you can't even find him on the map and if you want to know how to do that for your city stay tuned because we're going to talk about it later in the video because today we're going to go over 10 tips to avoid being zeroed in rise of kingdoms but first what's going on guys cheers now look the reason that i'm making this video is because we're in kvk right now and every single time a kvk comes around you guys know it i know it everyone knows it somebody in the kingdom gets zeroed who just shouldn't be zeroed they're just they make a mistake they don't know what they're doing or they log off at the wrong time in the wrong place so no matter how many amazing players are in your kingdom eventually someone just always seems to get zeroed including myself i got zeroed in 2021 and if you guys missed that video go ahead and check it out on the channel but ever since then i've implemented some of the tips here from this video and i've been safe ever since so the first tip that we're going to go over is the most basic and simplest tip ever and this is for play like this is for noob players this is for players who are below 10 million power okay so forgive me for starting with such an obvious one but tip number one be in an alliance be in an alliance okay i know a lot of new players comment on my videos and they log off for a day and they get kicked out of their alliance because it's a new server okay and they're not active enough and then they're not in an alliance and you're basically an easy target okay people know that if you're not in an alliance there's really no consequences to attacking your city because there's no group of people behind you that are willing to defend you or you're not starting a civil war with you know two different alliances in your home kingdom so if you're a brand new player start by just joining and staying in an active alliance okay tip number two it's also pretty obvious but this is one that i see even advanced players mess up from time to time and that is being on the correct territory in kvk and what i mean by this is in season of conquest there are different stories where you have what are called coalitions if you guys don't know what coalitions are they're effectively just a small group of alliances that are well they're allied but it's even more than that you can literally join those coalition alliances even if they're in other kingdoms other home kingdoms you can also join their rallies you can jump in and out of their cities you can defend their cities and coalitions make working together really really seamless in kvk the coalition system i think is honestly amazing it's great it's a huge quality of life thing and makes being allies so amazing but the problem is that sure you can teleport onto coalition territory but you are not safe on coalition territory so for example r90l is an alliance that we fought side by side with throughout this current kvk and if i go to teleport on their territory you'll see that it turns yellow and this is effectively a way to warn you saying hey you can teleport here but you're not going to be safe and what i mean by that is in kvk when you're in the lost kingdom your city cannot be rallied if it is on your territory if you are on the territory of the alliance that you are in your city is safe so that means the only way for your city to be hit is if you are off of your alliance territory or if you were on alliance territory and the flag gets burnt or you teleport onto territory that you think is safe but it's actually not and then you log off and that is probably the number one thing and again i know this is so so simple but so many people get this wrong that i literally have to talk about it okay now a quick solution to this is sure you can teleport onto unsafe territory and then and if you see a rally is launched against your city you can quickly just leave your alliance and join the alliance of the territory that you're actually on you can even do this after the rally launches like the rally could be an inch away from your city and you join the correct territories alliance and boom the rally can't do anything it's it can't hit you right so you can literally wait to the last second i wouldn't recommend doing that by the way unless you're like okay with it accidentally hitting you but please pay attention to the territory that you're actually on tip number three is also pretty obvious but as we're going down this list you're going to notice that these solutions to getting zeroed are getting more and more risky okay but number three still very safe and that is have a peace shield you can see that i am demonstrating that right now now of course i'm on the correct territory so i literally do not need a peace shield but a peace shield will protect your city from being attacked it literally says it right here the caveat here and the thing that players mess up a lot is that if they do not have a peace shield and they have war frenzy activated then you will not be able to activate your peace shield for some number of minutes 
after that war frenzy is initially activated so as you can see here if i scout this enemy flag you're going to notice that i'll get a 15 minute war frenzy activation which will give me three percent attack that's nice but you will be unable to activate a peace shield for 15 minutes so you get this not only from scouting enemy territory but for attacking enemy territory or attacking enemy troops in the open field so there's many ways for you to get war frenzy and if you're fighting in the open field the odds are you'll have some amount of war frenzy left and you'll see it on the top bar here as a matter of fact it looks like this and you can see now i have a 15 minute countdown timer and you'll notice that my city bubble is gone so now if they launch a rally at my city I cannot use a P shield for 15 minutes which means I could be in trouble and one of the problems that a lot of players have is a rally will launch at them and they will look for the city that's rallying them and they'll either scout the city or they will wait for the rally to launch and they'll scout the rally and when you scout the rally or you scout the player it refreshes your war frenzy okay it'll refresh it so now you have to wait 15 more minutes and this is even worse if your city gets imprisoned but that's a topic for another video but if you don't have war frenzy peace shields are basically the best way to protect your city from getting rallied other than just being in a safe territory that you can't actually get hit and i would recommend if you're gonna go to sleep and you're gonna be in war territory first of all that's very risky but let's say you want to hold down a specific spot so that way enemies maybe can't build a flag there or whatever the case might be then i would recommend a minimum of a 12 hour peace shield if not a 24 hour peace shield because the eight hour peace shields are just not enough the reason for this is because you will likely sleep for eight hours now of course if you are you know deep in the trenches of war maybe you're only going to sleep for two or three hours I, I know lots of players do that but realistically if you've got work tomorrow and you're getting a full night's sleep you're probably going to sleep for about seven or eight hours and that means when you log in you know after that eight hour mark you're immediately vulnerable and it only takes a few minutes for your city to get rallied so if you log in eight hours and seven minutes later you could be zeroed already okay so like you don't want to rely on the eight hour peace shield unless you know for sure you will be back in less than eight hours if you're gonna sleep i would not sleep with anything less than a 12 hour peace shield that's just me because that is just such a risk if you have to burn the 24 hour peace shield it's better to waste a 24 hour than it is to get zeroed okay moving on to tip number four i just alluded to this a minute ago but that is teleporting your city somewhere where you literally cannot be hit now in kvk this typically is your starting zone for the most part and for a majority of the kvk event your starting zone will be safe and you can always teleport back here if like let's say you're fighting in king's land right then you can decide okay it's time for me to log off and you can literally just teleport back to an area that your enemies can't possibly get into because of the way that the pass system works okay you can see here that this level five pass is semi-protected which means other alliances in my camp can can take it but you know the enemies can't so just keep that in mind now the fastest way to teleport would be to go into your items and come over here to random teleport and you click the button and it will immediately if you're able to teleport it will teleport your city the reason random teleports are the fastest is because you don't get to choose where you go the game will just put you somewhere randomly as the name will suggest but if all you care about is moving your city because let's say a rally is already coming at you then this is the fastest way to do it now it's not the safest teleport to use because it could teleport you four feet away from where you currently are now that's unlikely because it is literally random but it could happen okay so random teleport there is some amount of uh luck that is involved here okay but in general if you want just the fastest way to get away from somebody this would be the way to do it okay the safest way to teleport would be to zoom all the way out and then click on one piece of your territory tap on this little upwards arrow tap teleport and boom there you go it'll just use whatever the teleport is that is most logical so either ter territorial or targeted whichever is the most applicable boom 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 you're done three clicks and remember even if you decide to use the random teleport just because you're far away from the enemy doesn't mean that they're going to stop and not rally you if it's still possible for them to hit you they might just launch the rally anyway and sure it might have to walk 21 minutes but if you think you're safe and you log off they're gonna hit you in 20 minutes and it's gonna be gg so always be sure that you're teleporting somewhere actually safe tip number five has to do with just moving your troops out of your city now what do i mean by this well if your city is next to a flag or a fort that is extremely unlikely to be hit by your enemy anytime soon like multiple hours from now what you can do is you can actually reinforce 
with up to 2 million or for forts it's even more 2 million troop capacity and for most players first of all unless you have a troop expansion for most players you're not even gonna be able to max out a a flag all by yourself and for most of you you're only gonna have five armies so you're only gonna be able to put like a million troops in here maybe a little bit more but that is still much better than having them all in your city and having them all get hit so just for example I'm 77 million power and you could see here that I have 4.3 million units so being able to offload a quarter of my troops is it's not everything right I wish I could send more but really what you would want to do is you don't as many troops as you can into it and then you clear your hospital because in kvk you're also gonna have almost a million you got 609 a 69 nice you've got quite a lot of room in your hospital which is good so between that and the troops and the flag that are safe you could save a good portion of your troops from even being involved in getting deads at all now again is this a great strategy no but like i said earlier as we're going through this list we're using more and more risky strategies as ways to sort of save some number of your troops from your city getting hit tip number six is less of a method to avoid being zeroed as it is more so an efficient use of your hospital space in the event that you do start to get attacked or zeroed and what we're going to talk about is the tier of troops that you actually have in your city and what i would recommend is have no troops below tier four now obviously i'm breaking that rule right now siege do also have their own battering ram zone in your hospital so up to 50k of those you can have up to 50k realistically you want to not have any tier two tier three mix whatever you want to have the highest tier possible ideally you would want all tier five but like that's not realistic even for players like me you're going to use some tier four it just is what it is they're more cost effective but the reason that you don't want to have any tier threes or tier twos or whatever is because you know these troops are going to the lower tier units are going to end up in your hospital in some ratio okay and so like let's say you have about 20 percent of your troops are a mixture of tier three and tier two you just never got around to upgrading them or whatever you were lazy or maybe you just unlocked tier five or you just unlocked tier four and you never just got around to it well some number of those troops are going to end up in your hospital and taking up hospital space and i would much rather have a hospital tier full of tier fives and have the tier threes and tier twos die right like if my city is going to get rallied and i know some amount of troops are going to die i would rather the lower tier troops die because i can replace them a lot easier and realistically you're not you're just going to train new higher tier units but that's not how it works the game will automatically put some even ratio of those troops in your hospital and some by extension of that of your tier fives or tier fours are going to die instead and that sucks so always make sure that you are fighting with tier four or tier five and that your entire city is that find an event that's coming up and just upgrade those troops get around to it just do it if you ever have your city hit you're gonna come back and thank me tip number seven is also another way to sort of kind of avoid potentially getting zeroed and this has to do with opening your resource packs okay if you come into your items section here you're gonna see that i have a bunch of different resources really it's not that much i use a lot of them during kvk but i have a lot of items that i could use here to redeem to get resources and one of the number one reasons that players cities get attacked is if they have hundreds of millions or billions of each individual resource because that's a juicy haul if you've got billions of resources in your city the target on your back is absolutely massive players want to hit you because they want your resources they want to plunder everything so if you do not open these items you keep them in your inventory then they are safe from being plundered and this is one of the things that you know before kvk even started a lot of people commented on my video they're like omniarch you only have a couple hundred million resources like how are you even gonna fight and yet here we are end of kvk i've spent billions of each resource and that's because i had so many resources saved in my resource items here that people didn't even realize they, they scouted my city they thought i was broke and 14 hours later i'm still full healing my t5 hospitals because i got the resources boys so keep them in your item form they can't get stolen and people can't scout it which is nice you might avoid you might narrowly miss getting zeroed okay or you know at the very least they'll start attacking somebody else besides you you'll be lower on the on the totem pole and maybe you'll log in by then and it'll save you as a side note the storehouse kind of sucks right i feel like they should really bump these numbers up even if they 10x these numbers 
it would still be an irrelevant amount of uh, of resources protected right like let's let's see let's see the storehouse get buffed in 2024 can we okay moving on to tip number eight and this is where we start to get into the weeds here okay uh if you've if you're relying on tip number eight that means you've ignored tips one through seven and those were like the guaranteed ways to not you know get zeroed or to avoid being zeroed or to avoid being a target of getting zeroed okay tip number eight is actually have a garrison because if you ignored the first seven tips then that means you're gonna get you're, you're probably you know at this point you might be getting zeroed okay so if you have a good garrison with actual equipment on those commanders then maybe the enemy won't hit your city now that is very wishful thinking most likely you're probably still gonna get hit okay because in kvk people are bloodthirsty people want to swarm your city they want to zero you they want to rally you that's part of the fun is like zeroing other players right but if you have a really good garrison and this especially applies to players that are over 100 million people might think twice before actually trying to zero you because it could cost them a ton of troops you could trade really well and they might not want to risk it in the off chance that you're actually online and you're gonna take the the rally on purpose so that way you can get a sick trade so having good commanders on your wall is very important it is a sort of way to dissuade them from hitting you and also you can set up backup garrisons here if you want to now uh, realistically you should never have to rely on anything past the first like two or three okay i don't know why i'm i mean i guess it's nice that they included five presets here but you should go through if you've not done this yet and just set up a couple of emergency garrisons and slots two through five hopefully you won't have to use them hopefully you will be able to use your best garrison for those of you who are wondering Zenobia even though she's infantry focused she is great for your city wall same thing with YSS also Heraclius obviously was like built for defending your city there are a ton of great sort of universal garrison options you can use of course Martel is a decent one YSG kind of squishy but at least he's got the circular AoE right so there's a couple of different options that uh that you can use if it's if it's like the beginning of the game before kvk1 then you could put some epics on the wall like sun tzu again i'd if you have an epic on the wall you're probably gonna get hit okay but it, you know at least have a garrison commander there it's better than nothing barely it's like having a wall made of paper right but you know it's it's, it's kind of better than nothing i'll go with that and if you haven't gotten around to it go in and check the talents okay make sure that they have talents they have armaments and a formation picked and everything with gear and also make sure you have the right city skin these are all like little micro things that you can control to make sure that if you do get hit at least you have the best defense that you possibly can moving on to tip number nine this is what i referenced at the beginning of this video where i said that there is a way to literally remove your city from the map so you can't get rallied at all it is literally impossible for anyone to even see your city and the way that you do this depends on your power level if you are offline long enough your city will literally be teleported off of the map so you can't be hit now this information actually comes uh first of all it was known we knew that this was a thing we just didn't know the exact amount of time that you needed to be offline before your city was removed from the map now we know for sure because vip support did answer this question back in i think 2021 but here they say if a player hasn't logged in for a long time the system will take back their account and when the player logs in next time it will locate randomly please refer the following rules and you probably know this if you haven't logged into your farm for a while then you come back there's a pop-up that says do you want to migrate to another kingdom and then you can click at the bottom left corner you can click home kingdom and then it'll just basically teleport your city somewhere if you are city hall level one then if you go offline for five hours your city will be teleported off the map to safety if you're city hall level five or lower it'll be eight hours offline your city will automatically be teleported off the map city hall level eight or lower is 24 hours 10 or lower is 48 hours 15 or lower is three days offline 20 or lower is 20 days offline so it really bumps up there 21 to 24 is 25 days offline and if you are city hall level 25 you will have to be offline for 30 days before your city will be safely removed from the map so what do we do with this information okay well what we know is that you basically have to keep your city safe for 30 days without logging into it at all even for a second because that will reset the timer so how do you do that well great news there is a 30 day peace shield 
so you can technically buy a 30-day peace shield teleport somewhere random on the map leave your alliance whatever you want to do teleport off into some random corner of your home kingdom where no one can find you use that 30-day peace shield for forty-five thousand gems okay it's an insane price all right you use the 30-day peace shield immediately quit the app close it uninstall it whatever and then you know set a reminder on your phone and say okay on this day at this time that'll be exactly 30 days and once that time is up then you know your city couldn't have been hit for 30 days because it has a peace shield and then it will be removed from the map and then your account will be preserved it'll be preserved exactly as it is with the number of troops and all the commanders and everything like that all the resources and you'll be gucci then you can come back to the game in three months six months a year however long you want to take off okay and you'll be able to just pick up exactly where you left off without having to worry about your city getting zeroed at all also i'm pretty sure that when this happens your city is removed from power rankings in your kingdom so you're not actually affecting the matchmaking of your kingdom which is really good that of course would be a huge downside if that wasn't the case so if you want to take a break for minds of kingdoms for a little bit that's the way to go ahead and do it and finally let's move on to tip number 10 and this is a tip that i wish i could go back to 2021 omniarch and i could tell him that this was the number one tip okay really it's tip number 10 on the list but it's number one in my heart and that is don't fall asleep with your city in a vulnerable area don't do it don't even be tired when your city is in a vulnerable area because i've known players to literally fall asleep with their phone or their ipad in their hands they're literally nodding out while they're playing rise of kingdoms and they're in king's land because they've been up for 26 hours that ninth red bull's just not hitting the way the first three did okay and you're nodding out and you pass out you drop your phone on the floor and now you're asleep in your lazy boy chair or on the couch or in bed and you get rallied and you get zeroed okay or in my case i teleported back into the lost kingdom okay uh to put my garrison somewhere and i just forgot i fell asleep i forgot i didn't even realize i thought i was back in home kingdom i wasn't i got zeroed again check out the video that i posted a couple years ago if you missed it but falling asleep or having some other emergency family merge whatever is the number one way that people get zeroed so just don't let it happen to you anyway if you guys made it all the way to the end of the video i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kings players might see it obviously the topic of today's video was more so geared towards newer players but every kvk somebody who should know better still ends up getting zeroed so i just had to make this video to refresh your memory and if you have any other tips on how to avoid getting zeroed or to not get zeroed at all put them in the comments section below i'd love to hear from you guys down there and while you're down there go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kings video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace